Hey, welcome back. It is Garbage Day. That's hour 16 of 24 terrible hours. Uh, it's 2 in the morning my time. Don't know how it is in your time, but um, Three. I think we're feeling... I think we're feeling generally okay. I think I'm okay. feeling great. Okay, I got energy. Do wow. fine. Okay. Where are you getting your energy from? Green energy. Fantastic. Are after? Uh, fantastic. I was trying. Whoa, whoa! I don't know what that was, but that looked heavy. Like that shook the camera. Whatever you just threw down, <laughs> man. Theory. Uh, we're looking at uh, your host uh, for this evening. Uh, will be uh, come close up. Then you've got myself, uh, Adam Bozarth, Bump Girl, Bunny Bread, Sheepskate, uh, and Bonus Mr. Zara. Bun. Yeah. No, um, sticking around. And uh, if it chased me off with the broom. Yeah. Okay. So we are at six thousand one hundred and one dollars. Um, I have a donation incentive I'm going to be putting on the board um shortly. Um if you want to encourage uh Lady Frenzy to uh draw a penis for you, then you should stick around just for just a little bit. Uh but first uh, uh wait, wait. No, no, that no, mean no, incentive? No, context, no context, no context. Fun fact, sleep is a lie. You are a lie. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, so, uh, so come close up. Um, oh, hello. I get to host now. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 Stop all the hosting. Ha, ha. I, uh, hello, everybody. Hi. I want you to tell me about Greenland. I want to learn about Greenland. Okay. And you're going to tell me about Greenland. Sure, you bet. Yeah. Um, big. Love to. Yeah. Um, so could uh, could somebody tell me about sites.google.com slash site slash Greenland Theory dot slash home? Yeah, um, uh, I'm going to uh, put the link right here in the Twitch right now um, uh, because, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Levin, could you yeah. could you tell me about um, th that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, GreenlandTheory.com or GreenlandTheory.com and scare quotes. Uh, Greenland Theory colon Apocalypse Now 2014 explores the unrecognized but mighty conspiracy, which has been hidden from humanity for ages. Unfortunately, to the detriment of all life forms which have inhabited planet Earth. Briefly, the Roman Empire, commonly referred to as ancient Rome, evidently faked its own death 715 <laughs> years ago and now exer <laughs> experts command and control over 206 nations uh, of the world through its primary proxy state. I need to go back to the document because this site is hard on the eye. I remember playing this game of civilization. Proxy state, okay, of the Greco-Roman Empire. One, it relocated to Greenland just prior to the fall of Rome. Lastly, the names of Switzerland's largest cities can acronymically, acronymically, and or cons consonantly <laughs> deciphered as follows. Basel, B plus S plus L, meaning Babylon system line, an apparent reference to the Babylon system, which is funded by the Bank for International Settlement, or BIS, the mother bank of all central banks, Geneva, G plus N plus B, home of the United Nations, whose name evidently means the genesis of victory, an apparent tribute to the Greco-Roman goddess of Victoria and the foundation of Switzerland as the seat of the world government, and Zurich, Z plus R plus C forward slash K plus H meaning Zion Rock Forever. <laughs> Zion Rock Forever! <laughs> meaning Zion Rock Forever! That's and my favorite Zion. Mormon metal band. Uh, and apparently Mount tribute, Zion. An apparent <laughs> tribute to Mount Zion in... I fucking told you so. In oh. Greenland. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Wait, I think you actually pulled from two different sections of the readings and it just flowed together like it was all one. Yeah, I got really <laughs> lost for a second there and I couldn't tell. Are they, is this me yep. or was this a tech? I, I don't know. Uh, hey, hey, Zarla. Um, yes. Could, could you tell me about Chania Crete? Mm, at Greenland Theory slash Greece slash Chania Crete. Oh, that's the one, yeah. Okay. Um, Key City slash K plus N is located on the northwest side of the Greek island of Crete. The coastal city, which has been inhabited since the Neolithic era, 10.100 BC to 2000 BC, is allegedly the oldest inhabited city in the world. 
since the chevron symbol, i.e. the pointy chevron up symbol, symbol. <laughs> is, an, is an acronym for both the letters C and K in the Roman score, i.e. the Roman alphabet, the double pointy symbol, i.e. the letter M, right. is an acronym for, for Chinea Cree founded by Minos on Crete. The old town harbor of Chinea is entitled Acti, i.e. Acti Composi, Acti Conturioto, and Acti Enosios, which is coincidentally the name of a Roman military base, i.e. KT, or city, while the central part of old town Chinea is known as Castelli, i.e. Castle. <clears throat> I love, I, love, I love I love Sanguinary Novel just shrugging at the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, um that that's that's great. Um could you tell mm -hmm. me about the most uh, popular Chinea spawned terms? Uh, next paragraph. Like the prefixes and stuff? Uh, oh no, since it's the, the next paragraph. Yeah, yeah, yeah next yeah, paragraph. Yeah. Next paragraph. Okay. So, amongst the most popular Chinea spawned terms is that of Republican. I just want to point out this is an actual proper use of the word amongst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good word. Rarity. Rarity. Among the terms is that of Republican, Republicanism, <laughs> and Republican police 57 active political parties around the world. Republican, meaning Roman public con. <laughs> con is Get it. Con job. <laughs> Eat that shit, motherfuckers. <laughs> Paul, Paul <laughs> Ryan dealing free card Monty in the streets of Rome. <laughs> just be cool, just be cool, the cops, just be cool, just be cool. Yeah. <laughs> is likely a term derived from deceiving the Roman public through trickery. The name of Chinea, C slash Capos N, can also be found in the name of nine countries around the world, i.e. Burkina Faso, Canada, okay, Central African Wait, Republic, what? China, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Republic of Congo, United Kingdom, and Vatican City. Other Chinea-based names include, but are not limited to, the Canadian territory entitled Yukon, the names of four U.S. states, Connecticut, mm -hmm. Kansas, Kentucky, and Wisconsin, as well as numerous cities around the world, i.g. Chengdu, China, Chennai, India, Chongqing, China, and Constantinople, Turkey. Other yeah, modern tributes to Chinea there anymore. The Greenland in, theory. <laughs> other <laughs> modern tributes to Chinea include the CIA, the Central Intelligence, the CNN, Cable News Network, the allegedly Chinese teacher, politician, and philosopher <laughs> Confucius. Allegedly Chinese? <laughs> allegedly. How are you allegedly Chinese? <laughs> and, and movie entitled Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. Other <laughs> <laughs> so things happy. start with K or C. Yeah, yeah. And um, part kind of, sort of, maybe have an N in them, but not always. Yeah. Is this like a Mormon thing where Confucius is born in America, Jersey? Oh. Something? <laughs> Allegedly Chinese. Yeah. Um. Hey, hey, Adam. Yeah. Uh, I I know um, that uh, one of your hobbies is um, knowing things about Babylon. Um, yeah. Could you t could you tell me about Babylon? Of course I can. And this is from the section of Babylon, uh, this page, Bob Marley's Babylon system. <clears throat> in Bob Marley's album entitled Survival 1979, the track is named Babylon System. As evidenced by the lyric of this prophetic song, Marley <laughs> describes the sadistic Babylon system as portrayed to him by the elders of Jamaica. Marley, <laughs> merely. Wait, what was that? The pony version. Do you mean yeah. like Morley or Morley? Merely is not Merely or Merly. Merely or Merly. Iraqi system oh, around 2300 BC, but rather an Merly empirical a dog. and <laughs> diabolical system involving both church and university that simultaneously used the Caribbean as a slave depot for the last 400 years. Marley states that, quote, Babylon system is the vampire yes. sucking the children day by day. <laughs> Ooh, that's really gross. <laughs> a likely reference slavery, war, and usury. I oh, that's better then. In respect to Rome, Marley states, quote, Falling empire, building church and university, deceiving the people continually. Marley also makes a direct reference to the transatlantic slave <clears throat> trade, which was used to power Roman ships. I don't think that was Marley. 
Oh, Merely also yeah. used direct reference to the transatlantic <laughs> slave trade when he used to power Roman ships around the world. Quote, from the very day we left the shores of our father's land, Africa, we've been trampled on, we've been oppressed. Since landlocked Iraq was neither involved in transatlantic explorations, wars, and slave trade, it's safe to assume that Marley was speaking about the Roman Empire. Uh, I want to I want to interrupt for a quick second here uh, because uh, I have right. great news uh, for the listeners, and that great news is that uh, I think Lady Frenzy's a little bit drunk, and to <laughs> that end, uh, she has a donation incentive to provide for you. So uh, the next person to donate sixty five dollars or more will get a piece of classic. Uh, a piece of classic masterpiece of art with a fairy penis on top of it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone saw um, the uh, episode uh, or the the hour. It was uh, 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 hour six uh, was the uh, the uh, penis fairies uh, and the big boo women who love them. Um, but it will be similar to that. So uh, if you would like a uh, a piece of uh, a, a classic masterpiece of art. Um, with a with a fairy penis added to it, sixty five dollars or more uh, will get you that thing. And of course, uh, we do still have the thing. Uh, top donator of the hour um, gets their new fetish mailed to them, <laughs> but not their old fetish. No, no, it's a new fetish, a brand new fetish. Yeah, no, it's old news. Yeah, no. toss it not out of the like trash. old fetish back again. It's like new fetish. Oh, the fetish fetish pa back, yeah. un fairy penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no that would work that would, she, would, she would do that she would do that $65 or more yeah um, so I, I don't know what's going on but um, hey uh, hey cheapskate um, yes uh, so can you can you um, I've never you know I've never heard of this before and I'm, I'm you know I'm just getting educated here as all the listeners and the tuning into the stream could you tell us about uh, Roman airships please of course of the kind that I could have drawn for John Toast if he hadn't Select the hand tricky. Mm. <laughs> Based on evidence acquired to date, it appears that the Roman Empire were the first to develop aerostats, i.e. airships or zeppelins, which were lighter than aircrafts, which gained their lift through the use of a buoyant gases. The notion that hot air rises is rather evident to anyone sitting around a campfire as red hot ash routinely flies up into the night sky. Therefore, it likely didn't take long for the brightest Roman scientists of the day to figure out that hot air contained under a sack-like structure would naturally go airborne. Although the first man's aerostats were likely observed Observation balloons tethered to the ground or a ship during war for intelligence gathering and artillery spotting purposes. It was only a matter of time before the Romans were able to conquer the skies with their flying ships. <laughs> I don't remember Roman that in ships. history class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Early Roman airships were likely constructed with more than one balloon that were tethered together so that if one malfunctioned or was punctured in battle, the airship would stay afloat, considering that the three main parts of an early airship with a gas-containing envelope, i.e. the balloon, the gondola, i.e. the ship, and a fire-producing apparatus, the design was relatively oh. elementary! Oh. But what didn't figure it out? Since Roman clipper ships were already powered by oaring slaves, it likely didn't take long before Roman airships were outfitted with slaves who powered a propeller-like mechanism which pushed the ship forward. Airships prototypes were likely teased as at, at sea using light ships so that in the event that the ship lost buoyancy, they could float once they landed. In Greek mythology, harpies, which made the symbolic of airships, were vicious, cruel, violent, and were usually seen as a personification of the destructive nature of wind like planes and ships today. Airships likely had female personifications, one of which may have been the harpy. Oh, like the cat. <laughs> yes! Yay! Thank you. Yay! Yay! Uh, Yay. So in the uh, chat there, uh, Lady Frenzy was like, I don't know if anyone would want this thing. Uh, well, I got news for you, Lady Frenzy. Uh, two people wanted this thing and donated <laughs> very, very, very close to each other. Uh, so I think that you get to do two pieces of, uh, of, uh, of masterpieces of art. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sherman Tank, uh, $66.60, and Ven with $65.00. Um, and uh, Ven, uh, Sherman Tech did not uh, specify that'll happen later, I'm sure, but uh, Ven says, uh, please draw a fairy penis on Saturn devouring his son. <laughs> that is that is an excellent excellent request i can't wait to see that that is, that is a gift to the world um so 
I, I don't know about you, but I'm really concerned about Zeppelins now. Um, hey, 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 Bump Girl. I think um, they're almost like nightmare fuel. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bump Girl, <laughs> could, could you uh, could you tell us um, why we don't see these Roman Zeppelins today? So what happens in, when I you rush your I should describe the end of the Zeppelin era? Yes. Okay. In order to end airship travel completely so that no one else discovered Greenland... <laughs> The tragic Hindenburg disaster was executed on May 6, 1937, killing 36 people. <laughs> the Romans did this. Although numerous hypotheses have been put forward as the cause of the crash, sabotage is the most likely culprit. Airships were known for their stellar safety record. Because the <laughs> Romans established it and they documented everything. Sorry, I'm being a bummer, thank, right? I mean, thank goodness there were no yeah. other flying things so that yeah. nobody else would have found Greenland when... Right. Those yeah. other flying even... things yeah. did not have stellar safety records. So <laughs> okay, yeah, I bet there's not even a Wikipedia category for Zeppelin crashes. Mm. Yeah, no. mm. research. <laughs> Airships were known for their stellar safety records. So the fact that multiple news crews were waiting at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station trope. Oh, sorry, uh, the last hour. Um, in Lakehurst, <laughs> New Jersey, <laughs> for what would have been a routine landing by its by is rather suspicious that's not capitalized so by is rather suspicious it's like it's not like the agent yeah. um okay no fuck it i'm not starting from the beginning to say the least at, it's as if the swarm of photographers and news crews also known as nanobots knew something was going <laughs> to happen and it did also the fact that one ground crewman died despite the crash happening in an completely open field, suggests that he may have been responsible for the attack and subsequently assassinated in the aftermath. Well, that was Step very quick. Fuel can't melt steel beams. <laughs> he did it. Kill him immediately. <laughs> that was the best sentence ever. <laughs> also, the fact that one ground crewman died despite the crash happening in an completely open field suggests that he may have been responsible for the attack and subsequently assassinated in the aftermath. <clears throat> Considering the that the advent of television trope was only a decade <laughs> or so prior, the fiery crash was in essence the 9-11 of its time. Once the shocking photos and video footage of fiery crashes, crash, sorry, only one, there's only one crash, don't, want, don't believe otherwise, it's because mm -hmm. scary, um, was disseminated, were disseminated, once the shocking photos and the video footage <laughs> of fiery crash were disseminated worldwide, don't worry everyone, that is proper grammar. The yeah, public... I didn't say so. Uh, I do, it's my professional opinion. All right. You're... You're ruining my conclusion, Lemon. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, God, this guy. The public's confidence in airships was forever shattered, just as it was planned. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, wait, there's a sound clip for that. Someone find it quick. It won't be after the fact and too late at all or oh, anything. Damn it. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I clicked away. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a yard sale! <laughs> oh, shit, I'm the wrong one. I'm the best. Um, I'm the best. Uh, uh, hey, uh, hey, Adam. Yeah. Um, I, I don't care about any of this other stuff. Uh, I want you to tell me about the CIA. Okay. Mister. Let me find the CIA. <laughs> oh, I see. The IA. You mean the Central Intelligence Agency? Oh, well, that's what you're going to tell me. Located in Central Europe, Switzerland is home to the really? Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> really? Okay. It was Wait, found is this the second so time Switzerland? Switzerland? Like, it was never my best subject. Like, this is exciting to learn all this new stuff. I was really wrong about a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was found in 714 really years right now. <laughs> No, I think everyone, you really need to let him say this entire sentence again. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Located in Central Europe, Switzerland is home to the Central Intelligence Agency, which was founded 714 years ago in 1300 AD, or the year triple zero. <laughs> <laughs> when it all began. 
<laughs> I cannot fucking parse this. <laughs> the CIA is also known as the Holy C, i.e. the yeah. Holy Letter C. Wait, it's a C plus K oh, divided by that N? Sesame Street episode. <laughs> C is for cookie. Which is the ecclesiastical jurisdiction of the Catholic Church in Rome. That's two Cibolo. C's. <laughs> the notion that Switzerland is Greco-Roman in origin is evidenced by the Greek cross, which is depicted on the flag of Switzerland. <laughs> if Switzerland was a, quote, neutral country as they claim to be, they would not be the home of the state-of-the-art Onyx intelligence gathering system, which spies on the rest of the world. <laughs> In other words, the world's most advanced electronic espionage facility would not be housed in Switzerland unless it was home to the Central Intelligence Agency, the world <laughs> central CK plus N plus T plus R plus L plus Alt plus Delete <laughs> is the acronymical equivalent of the word control. C slash K plus, R plus N plus T plus R plus L. Oh, for the CIA. So for the CIA. acronymical equivalent just means it has the same letters. Consonants. Consonants. Some, yeah. it has some of the same letters. Yeah. For the CIA. But if you turn in... the letters into numbers and then sum them, oh. it turns into 714 years ago, which is 1300. Yeah. <laughs> the CIA is We're in talking. command and control of the entire underworld. The CIA of the United States which was founded in the in 1848 sorry in 1948 is political yeah, cover right sorry oh. <laughs> political cover for the black operation and war related actions that are executed around the world by the CIA in Switzerland this is ultimately oh, where the term this is ultimately where the term swiss army knife comes from as <laughs> <laughs> it, does it, it, so it doesn't come from the knife? No. Okay. From the Swiss. I would assume that the term Swiss Army Knife would come from the Swiss Army Knife itself. But no, the term, it has nothing to do with knives. That's the what the man wants you to believe. Switzerland has every single military and political tool at their disposal. <laughs> and a corkscrew. And a leather awl. And a toothpick. The, the country Which you've lost uh, like 15 minutes after getting it. Oh, yeah. Let's oh, yeah. face it. The country of Switzerland is subdivided into 26 cantons or states which share four official languages, mm -hmm. i.e. German, French, Italian, and Romance. <laughs> as well as two non-official languages, i.e. Swiss, German, and English. Yeah. This effectively shows Switzerland to spy on Europe as the rest of the world via state-of-the-art technologies, e.g. cell phones, drones, phones, satellites, watches, etc. This is where the term Swiss watch was derived from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> For Switzerland unwittingly watches. Motherfucker, I'm not just watching you. I am Swiss watching you. <laughs> I am watching your watch. <laughs> That's I'm watching. I used to watch you. I, used to I watch. want to explain the cheese next. <laughs> I'm swatching you. Oh yeah, it's the cheese in here. Ooh. Can you really uh, unwittingly spy on? <laughs> yeah, well, Switzerland unwittingly watches on, and are you spies on the rest of the underworld on behalf of the Greco-Roman Empire in Greenland. <laughs> yes. I'm so happy now. <laughs> oh, Greenland, that's right. This is the Greenland theory. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for relating your paragraph to your thesis, at least. <laughs> Switzerland. Uh, okay, hold on. Hold on. The CIA <laughs> I also I created... Lost, the CIA <laughs> also created Microsoft Windows, which allows them to look through the windows of <laughs> businesses and lives. <laughs> Put them on your wall. <laughs> As well as Google, you which are electronic Windows goggles. Until you marry art and science for this era. <laughs> Thanks, little I am. <laughs> that allows the CIA to monitor what users are searching for. In reality, the internet, which was specifically created in order to identify and neutralize businesses, corporations, and individuals, which present a threat to the status quo. Jesus Christ was crucified on Roman cross, 
which was coincidentally found on the flag of Switzerland because the CIA no, it's not. of <laughs> You no, said earlier it wasn't. The, the, no, the Roman <laughs> cross. First of all, the Roman cross is just a plus sign. Like yeah. Jesus was <laughs> crucified on a red plus sign. Yeah, and it's coincidentally <laughs> yeah, around the around the yeah. Excuse me, Lemon, they didn't have color yeah. back then. It was all black and white. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see you're yeah. Calvin's dad. Yeah. Speaking of black, <laughs> speaking of black and white, because the CIA of Switzerland unwittingly executed all those who attempt to save the world from the rule of Greco-Roman Empire in Greenland. That is why Jesus, again. That is why Jesus, the Savior of the world, is betrayed by the Jews just oh. prior to his crucifixion at the hands of the Roman Empire. Switzerland was also where the concept of spy versus spy originated. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> there's black and white again. And they come again. Yeah. <laughs> as each respective country and territory of the world is funded by the bank for international settlements bis in basel switzerland in order to gain intelligence which fosters the notion that each respective country of the world is sovereign lastly the logo of the spy optic sunglasses also depicts the greek cross found on the flag of switzerland an apparent tribute to the espionage conducted by the country of Switzerland. Wow. <laughs> now, wow. I, I know, you know, maybe some of you aren't convinced. I know maybe you need some more, you know, uh, backing up of these theories here. And that, oh, that's why I'm going to I'm going to tell you about the Incredible Hulk. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Incredible Hulk. So sexy. The Incredible Hulk is a fictional superhero found in comic books published by Marvel Comics. He is portrayed as a large green humanoid that possesses near limitless superhuman strength and great invulnerability. Agreed. As opposed to regular or minor invulnerability. Right. Um, the green giant appears to be a tribute to the giants of Greenland. I while the term agree. Hulk, H plus L plus CK, is the acronymical equivalent of the Holy See, i.e. the Holy C, H plus L plus C. Therefore, it can be deduced that the Holy See is in fact ultimately controlled by the Greco-Romans in Greenland. It's not controlled by the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> the oh, you clearly don't get anything. The Incredible Hulk is the Greco-Romans in Greenland. <laughs> That's why no. he's always wrestling people without using his legs. Wait, is mm. the Hulk the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> The Hulk mobile. Yeah. <laughs> <Pope -mania. laughs> um, yeah uh, so, uh, anybody here played uh, rock paper scissors ever? I before? have. Yep. Okay, Lemon, yep. could you um, could you tell me about um, the game the game rock paper scissors? The game rock paper scissors. Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> awesome. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, rock paper scissors is a hand game played by two people where the players simultaneously form one of three shapes with an outstretched hand, i.e., rock paper or scissors. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow down. Uh, okay. Okay. Can you go over that again? In short, the rock beats the scissors. <laughs> the scissors beats the paper, and the paper beats the rock. Well, duh, of course. <laughs> now, do you do one, two, three, shoot, or do you do one, two, three? The good <laughs> one, two, Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, rock, paper, scissors originated in Asia. It's a metaphor for the delegation of authority in respect to Greenland. <laughs> yes! Uh, okay, I take it back. That is the best sentence of the year. Uh, well, so, uh, so Zarla, could you could you yeah. tell us about rock? See, rock, Greenland. Rock, i.e. the rock of ages. <laughs> oh, it's not the rock. I like that musical. <laughs> is representative of Greenland, which is located atop Earth's iron core, i.e. the North Pole. What? Okay. Wait, no, okay. <laughs> fuck science, fuck science. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, fuck science. Consequently, the core of the island is constructed of solid iron rock. Rock beat scissors, i.e. Switzerland, because the country is completely oblivious of Greenland's existence as it's the true sole true power in the world. Right, so we meant to use the word unwittingly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hey, cheapskate. Um, could you yes. uh, could you tell us about uh, could you tell us about paper? Okay. Yeah. Paper is symbolic of law and orders. <laughs> Yay! Yes. Oh, beautiful. Paper is representative of Greco-Roman law and orders. 
Wait, uh, the, no. <laughs> wait, wait, hit the button, hit the button, someone! <laughs> Thank you! Which were previously sent from Greenland to Switzerland in paper form, maybe via airship. However, <laughs> due to the invention of the internet, the orders are now likely sent via a secure form of email. Paper beats <laughs> rock, i.e. Greenland, because in the event that Switzerland becomes aware that the laws they are enforcing in the underworld emanated from Greenland, the game is over. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. Makes sense. James Makes Joyce. sense. Um, hey, 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 bump girl, uh, what, what, about, oh. what about scissors? What about scissors? Well, scissors, as I obviously understood earlier, was Switzerland, because they both start with an S, and not a C or a K. Oh. Adds up. Scissors is representative of the country of Switzerland, which is home to the CIA. Consequently, the country is charged with cutting off and cutting out unwanted businesses, people, and countries who pose a threat to the Greco-Roman Empire in Greenland. This is why every Swiss army knife contains a scissors, for it, it is symbolic of the role Switzerland plays in the execution of Roman policy in the underworld. The symbolic scissors you can't use for anything else. I know the they don't it's open. It's metaphors. It's not a metaphor, it's fact. Uh, yes, ho yes, hello. Excuse me, uh, Victoria Knox Corporation. Could I um, could I order a place an order for some uh, Swiss Army knife, but with no scissors? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, because scissors beats paper. Because Switzerland can always alter their respective orders based on real time information because of <laughs> CF paper law and orders, the invention of the internet. <laughs> Sorry, that was editorializing. I'm I apologize. <laughs> Yeah. How dare you. Um, paper, so, scissors yeah, beats paper um, because Switzerland can always alter it. Be mocked. No yeah, uh, we're Greenland. we're definitely uh, skipping the next one. But um, hey, Zarla, yeah. how about uh, <laughs> <laughs> could you tell us about yep. the Beast of Greenland? Skimming our eyes right past that. The Jewish race. Skimming our right past the anti-Semitism. <laughs> I've touched it. Okay, the Beast of Greenland, because the island of Greenland is geographically shaped like the head of a bear, wolf, or a fox. It's so we don't know which, but science will let us know very soon. Because nobody wait. discovered Greenland! Wait, wait, wait. That, what was it shaped like? The head of a bear, wolf, or a fox. Bear, wolf, one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Its silhouette appears to have only one eye. This shape is coincidentally replicated in the shape of southern Texas, with Austin, Texas representing the eye of the bear. The... Uh, how to make bump girl and Zarla giggle like teenage girls. <laughs> That's not hard. The single eye is symbolic of the blindness that Greenland suffers, for it is cut off from the underworld, relying completely on the CIA of Switzerland for its survival. The one-eyed beast of Greenland is most commonly depicted as the Eye of Providence, i.e. the all-seeing eye, all eye of G-O-D, Otherwise known G -O -D. as Greenland of Denmark. G O D. I finally know what God is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Greenland of Denmark. The Eye of Providence and the Bear of Greenland is coincidentally found on the flag of Sialiai, I guess. The uh, fourth Sialia. largest city the in, in <laughs> the fourth largest city in Lithuania. In oh, North Lithuania. this is how the Lithuanians fit into it all. Ah, I was waiting obviously. for it. <laughs> In Norse, mytholo Norse mythology, the god of Odin, who coincidentally only has one eye, goes by the name of Battle Wolf and Bear. <laughs> uh, both tributes to Greenland. The I biblical number of the beast. When I was a kid. <laughs> the biblical number of the beast, i.e., six six six, also Stop appears to. <laughs> It also appears to be a direct reference to Greenland, as the Holy Bible is the allegorical and metaphorical history book of the Greco-Roman Empire. The term beast, BST, was evidently derived from the term best, BST, which is why, okay, which is why Greenland was chosen as the home of the Greco-Roman Empire. This guy would be uh, really good at naming San Francisco startup companies. I'm <laughs> 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 the Mesopotamian god Ugalu is, is known as the big weather beast for the Ugalu, G plus L, acronomically equates to Greenland. 
Lastly, <laughs> lastly, in Disney's Monsters Inc. Oh, <laughs> I knew that would tie in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I've been waiting to find out. <laughs> the character known as Mike Wazowski is depicted as a one-eyed green monster, a modern tribute to the beast Greenland. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. And I'm I'm convinced. Um, hey, hey, Lemon. Uh, I know, I know you like uh, time. My robots. Oh yeah, I do like time. I like time a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, could you could you tell us about uh, Greenwich Mean Time, please? Of course. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Greenwich Mean Time (GMT) was a time system that was kept at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, London. Because of its titular association to Greenland, the time <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time GMT was subsequently changed to Coordinated Uver Universal Time, Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC, in 1972. Okay. What's that? Whoa, whoa. Cheapskate, fix your internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cheapskate, buy better internet. The term Greenwich Mean Time appears to be a cover for Greenland Man Time. <laughs> Is that like Florida Man, man, man Time? It's Man Time. <laughs> Greenland Man and Florida Man, are they related? A veiled reference to the line of man, i.e. the 13 bloodlines of Rome, which now resides in Greenland. <laughs> Similar to the letter G, which is located directly in the middle of the American and European computer keyboards. That's actually a fact. <laughs> I don't look and check, but yeah. <laughs> Greenland is located in the middle of Earth. I thought it was on the North Pole. I'm confused. It depends on the North Pole is in the middle, at. duh. <laughs> Consequently, Greenland experiences all time zones simultaneously. <laughs> Now it's time cube. Greenland man hates time zone man. <laughs> man. It's time cube except for the cube has like 36 sides. <laughs> it's a hypercube, okay? Time cube. Uh, yeah, so that is hence the term green witch or witch. <laughs> Greenland essentially only has one time zone, the Greenwich Mean Time. The term Green Witch is also a tribute to the witchcraft employed by the Imperial Cult of Rome, i.e. the Great White Brotherhood in Greenland. I mean, obviously, but thanks for giving us that refresher for our <laughs> listeners. The Great White Brotherhood are the fans of the band Great White. Yeah, the Great White Brotherhood and the Great White Brotherhood are going to burn down your concert hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um hey hey adam uh, i know i you, i know you like maps um mm -hmm. could, could you tell us about maps of greenland greenlandtheory.com despite <laughs> google earth and hundreds of satellites in space there is corolsley not <laughs> one detail no, please map. say that word for me again corolsley Kar Corolsy. I'm so corralled so right now. Corralsy. <laughs> I'm very corralled too. I'm very corralsy in our th 18. Um, not one detailed map of icebergs and ice flows, which allegedly inhabit Greenland. Only <laughs> very photoshopped photos. Their natural homeland can roam free. <laughs> also, depending on the given map, the island of Greenland varies in length with location <laughs> and in respect oh to North Jesus. America and Europe. In some maps, <laughs> Greenland is a tiny sliver-like island off the coast of Canada, while mm -hmm. in other maps, Greenland's a massive continent almost as large as the United States and Canada combined. <laughs> what map would that be? The Mercator projection. Yes. I yes. have never owned the globe. <laughs> Thank you, Bozarth. I love you so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Greenland can't be both small and large, and therefore <laughs> maps pertaining to Greenland appear to be fraudulent in nature. You're fraudulent. I'm just trying to parse the, the map of the math there. Oh, sanguinary now it went away, but there was some there was some very important math. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no, it's gone now. Bring yeah. back the oh, math. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. She hates me. She's not listening. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay, but girl, everyone hates you, says Lemon. Yeah. What? That's <laughs> not why. Uh, that was that was a long inference that you made there. <laughs> um, 
Hey, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, bump girl. Um, I want to know about continental drift. <laughs> oh, thank you for giving me the most sciencey things of all the sciences stuff in here. I'm gonna love you forever for that. Yeah, I, I assume it's sort of like Tokyo Drift, but. <laughs> Uh, I think it's more like, continental drift. Like Fast and the Furious drift? <laughs> okay. Let me explain it. Oh, oh, don't worry. We're going to define it for you. Continental drift is the movement of the Earth's continents, trope, relative to the poles <laughs> as they drift across the face of Earth. Although continental drift does indeed occur, it is a sociological phenomenon <laughs> as well as a geological one. Oh, I the really social love it so much. Right. Oh, the continents just get so oh. pressured to drift, you know? <laughs> Earthquakes are a social construct. <laughs> They're trying to fit within their assigned continental rules. Is the earth really shaking if no one is there to perceive it? <laughs> Since the world has been under the fascist rule of the Roman Empire, sea travel the most prominent form of travel since the zeppelins were burned down. Sorry, that's it. Just realizing I'll yeah. start over again. Since the world has been under the fascist rule of the Roman Empire, sea travel and travel in general has dwindled to an all-time low, mainly due to economic factors and travel-related terrorism, e.g. the thinking of the Titanic Hindenburg disaster. I was right, bitches. 9-11 yeah. attacks, etc. The cetera. Titanic was a terror... A terror attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where uh, would you send yeah. an iceberg you from? That, you think that, Greenland. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, you're 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 terrified of ice now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Greenland this is, have, this is why you have to take your shoes off every time you want to go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> On the Titanic. <laughs> Consequently, continents such as Africa and Australia have drifted apart in the mind of man, despite being virtually <laughs> right next to each other. This kind of Rush lyrics, or <laughs> maybe it's like Pink Floyd or Bad Religion lyrics. <laughs> it's no accident that the term "ocean" c slash k plus n slash x. Hmm. Wait, what? Hmm. N. X are the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. It gets even better. Okay. Consonantly equates to con, as in con man, for they are a scientific hoax in that they are not nearly <laughs> as large as they appears on the map. Mm. <laughs> ah, uh <-huh. laughs> this is a hoax is possible. This is hoax is possible. This is hoax is possible yeah. because a majority of travel is done by plane, not Zeppelin, and seafaring vessels such as cruise ships, tankers, and the respective navies of the world are solely reliant on GPS to guide them to their destination. Why, why did we move away from Zeppelins anyway? I don't know if I've <laughs> ever heard of Zeppelins of Greenland. Oh. Killed one person and we said no. <laughs> <laughs> Your ocean looks different from a Zeppelin, guys. <laughs> also sailors have become reliant on their instruments rather than their instinctual seafaring skills mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. is this something you're born with <laughs> yeah, poke, yeah poke a sailor and he instantly knows which way north well, is I know which way north is <laughs> lemon you're a sailor <laughs> oh my god, I feel like our friendship has been like based I on a mean, farce. I here. can dress up as one if you got the money. <laughs> yeah, you can sing a lot of Gordon Lightfoot songs. <laughs> Please go to fiverr.com to get lemon to dress up as a sailor. <laughs> I'd rather go to thefpl.us and uh, donate $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> <That's really it. laughs> okay, don't worry. I'm about to like just blow your fucking minds here. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Lastly, yeah, yeah. in conclusion, the current map of the world depicts a majority of the continents surrounding the Atlantic, while the oceanic and Pacific side of the Earth is relatively continent-free. <laughs> Would you say it's incontinent? Needless to say, <laughs> this phenomenon is highly improbable as nature is always balanced. Always. Always. So, yeah. what what exactly is the hoax? The ocean. Uh, that the oceans are big and Africa and Australia are 
close to each other? Is that the idea? Thick. Continental yeah. drift is a hoax? No, wait, it does indeed occur. It, but it's, you know... It's, it's a socially constructed social, phenomenon. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, this, will, this will make, this will clear this up. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me drop some science yeah, up your bungholes yeah. here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Bungholes! Unbeknownst to most of humanity, the Earth is shaped like a disc. Oh, boy! <laughs> it's disc <laughs> world! Oh, Rather flat it's on the top. Together at last. <laughs> with a convex lens-like bulge at the bottom. Oh, convex. Thanks, Earth. Kumquat. <laughs> In other words, Earth resembles a typical alien spacecraft, which looks like a discus, hence the term discovery. <laughs> <laughs> Earth was a flying okay. sphere the whole time. <laughs> this person well, in no way understands us. linguistics or understands them at a much deeper level than any of us hey, ever hey, seen. Hey, 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 hey. Although only conjecture, it's highly likely that the Greco Roman philosopher Plato first discovered Earth's disk or plate like shape. In I short, atop the Earth is Mount Olympus, i.e. the North Pole, in Greenland, the northernmost <laughs> point of Earth's iron core, while Ayers Rock, i.e. the South Pole, is found down under in Australia, the southernmost point of Earth's iron core. In Antarctica Chicago, does not exist. This <laughs> phenomenon is known as... The southern point of, of, of Earth I can think of, yeah. That any Did point I... in Earth's surface which is diametrically opposite to it. Two points which are antipodal uh, to each other are connected by a straight line running through the center of the Earth. A term likely described from Earth's magnetized iron core which draws compasses towards the north. The notion that the Earth is a relatively flat disc-shaped object was also held by the aboriginal cultures of the Americas who believed that the flat Earth was domed by the firmament, i.e. the clouds of Earth's second moon. The Sumerian sky god Anne ruled the heaven, which were separated from the flat disc of the Earth below, inferring that there are indeed two sides to the Earth. Consequently, the Sumerians, which are an alias of the Greco-Romans, also <laughs> believe that the universe consisted of a flat disk enclosed by a dome. Thank you. Goodbye. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's not what consequently means. <laughs> And yes, that is my big problem with this document. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, consequently so I, I, starts I, I, with con, which means it's con artists, which means it's C the plus K plus N. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, oh, cheapskate. Uh, welcome yes. back to the land of living. Um, now that you're back in the land of living, I need you to tell us about Davy Jones' locker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What? Davy Jones' locker is an idiom for the bottom of the sea. In essence, it is the state of death experienced by drowned sailors and shipwrecks. Consequently, it is used as a euphemism for drowning and where sailors and ships are consigned to the bottom of the sea, i.e. Davy Jones' locker. Although the origin... This euphemism is used as a euphemism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although the euphemism. origin... Of the terms, Davy Jones, i.e. the sailor's devil, D plus V, are mm -hmm. unclear. A 19th century dictionary traces Davy Jones to the ghost of Jonah. In the Holy Bible, the allegorical and metaphorical history of the Greco-Roman Empire, Jonah Take a drink. is a... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the prophet who spends three days and three nights inside a large fish. The scientifically impossible narrative appears to be an allegorical <laughs> metaphor for the use of a submarine. <laughs> like a fish can stand or water for days, therefore it can be deduced. Another drink. Davy Jones is code word for submarines, which are in essence consigned to the bottom of the sea. Because sailors are underneath the water for an extended period of time, they have in essence been drowned, hence the word. Although a lock or locker is now known as a device used to raise or lower ships between different levels of water, the first locker or locker was likely a rudimentary submarine, in which sailors were physically lost inside. One case which in the steel tomb from which there was no escape, the submarine would travel down through different levels of water to the bottom of the sea, hence the term Davy Jones' locker. Ah. Uh, great. Oh my god. 
great, great. Um, so that's fine. That's fine. But um, who wants to test out my new submarine? <laughs> um, you know, we're we're all in this present uh, time and political climb. So, uh, Lemon, could you could you tell us about global warming? Oh yeah, global warming. Uh, global. Oh, sorry, not global warming. Oh, sorry, I no. Uh, I no, can't no. tell you about global warming. No, don't tell me about global warming. Tell me about the global warming hoax. That's what I want yeah. you to tell me about. Yeah. Global, global warming. warming? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want the hoax? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the concepts of global warming and climate change were originally designed by, huh? Huh? Guesses? Blood. No? Uh, Who? blood and semen? The yes. Roman <laughs> Empire in Greenland in order to see ah. the world into thinking that the Greenland ice sheet along with the polar ice caps are melting or at risk of melting. You know, the Roman Empire, <laughs> post-industrial revolution Roman Empire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah postmodernist. Yeah, yeah. Never Empire. mind the fact that the Arctic, Antarctica, the North Pole, and the South Pole do not even <laughs> exist in reality. Oh my god, That's you're right. so much better now. Oh, this is right. why Australia is this place of the South Pole, not Antarctica, because it doesn't exist. Morgan Freeman lied to me. There was no March of the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> no, those penguins were just in Australia. Typical Roman propaganda. You can still love Morgan Freeman. In short, global warming and climate change are part of a worldwide psychological operation or psyop designed to frame an <laughs> argument over whether or not the Earth is warming rather than over whether the, the Greenland ice sheets and the polar ice caps even exist. By stating that the Earth is simultaneously warming and cooling, see something else, humanity is collectively stuck debating a fake issue, both sides of which are fraudulent in nature. Needless to say, this massive lie has been perpetrated with the goal to confuse humanity about the true nature of the world's weather, especially in respect to Greenland. Considering that's that all we want all our meteorology is. Considering that all of considering that I live in Minnesota. <laughs> considering that all of the earth is warm. <laughs> especially right now. At least during the summer. The term <laughs> global Who is summer. <laughs> is essentially true, albeit in a de facto manner. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, God. Great. All oh, that to God. say, well, summer's global warming. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with Lemon on that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Yay, wow, Victor. We, learned, we learned so much in this hour. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so sad we can't read the Santa Claus part. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. But he's S plus pretty... N, X, yeah. X plus T plus yeah. C, K plus L plus S. He wears red and white, the colors of the Roman Empire. Uh, <laughs> uh, ends on Freely the Banana Girl. He wears a black boot. Boot. The fascist boot of the Roman Empire. My God, so fucking good. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you, Cheapskate. Oh, oh my god. god, this is an amazing document. Wow. The Santa to, one keeps going. Sorry and it gets Santa amazing. It's really good. It's really good. We'll oh, wow. Some, we'll have to pull some of it out and use it for something else. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this I is, did, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, 20 pages uh, I didn't want to say uh, to Ven. Uh, Ven, of course, was, um, uh, was looking for... Um, um, uh, Saturn devouring his son um, as a uh, sentient fairy penis. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you're already in luck uh, because I'm putting it on the stream right now. Uh, but Lady Frenzy is done with your drawing and it's pretty gruesome. <laughs> uh, we'll be giving you a uh, higher res uh, version of that drawing uh, in the near future. Um, in the next hour, uh, looks like we've got uh, myself hosting. Um, then we've got uh, Bunny Bread, uh, Jack Chick. Who was totally here for this past hour entirely. <laughs> oh, and we're reading Transformers kink meme. That's exciting. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh, Yay! wow. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, thanks a lot. Oh, Sanguinary Novel. Uh, this is uh, Sanguinary Novel is coming back, uh, but uh, she's on uh, a, a break here. Um, and uh, so the uh, upcoming artist is. Uh, me Sir? yeah Yay. all right fantastic so uh we'll see you in a little bit i'm gonna hit the break button right